everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and it is Craft Chat Day. Welcome, welcome. This is Junk Journal um, playtime here. We're playing with our papers, and apparently we've got some buttons to play with, too. I am a button hoarder, I admit it. I have uh, two giant drawers of these things, and I have a very hard time walking by buttons. Aren't they? These are cool, aren't they? They look like uh, currants, and uh, those are really neat. Um, so anyway, we're going to be pulling a new Scrappy Contest winner today. And I'm going to be pulling from last Friday's comment section for the craft chat. So if you um, put a comment in last week's video, you may be pulled. Your name may be pulled today. Watch for your name. Odds are much better than the billion, multi-billion dollar lottery. And uh, we're pulling from 549 comments today. And then um, if you put a comment on today's video, you are automatically entered into next week's scrappy contest. And what is the scrappy contest, in case you don't know? Uh, basically, they're Pam's scraps. I've been making a lot of things lately, and I have some what I think are pretty cool junk journal scraps. Um, just everything ranging from ephemera scraps to paper scraps to scrapbook paper scraps to um, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and I just thought they might find a happier home. Um, and uh, this is my way to, to get them out to you. So along with that, we will answer some of your crafty questions. And you've got some good ones today. Let's jump on in there and I'll, I'll try and find some new ones here. Let's see. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, let me refresh, refresh. And these are coming from YouTube. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -da. Do you have any, uh, this is Amy Bell Castro asks, do you have any qu suggestions as to the best way to organize the papers and ephemera? Love your videos. Oh my goodness, Amy. Uh, you may be asking the wrong person. I just had a disastrous craft avalanche here. Um, I had a cardboard paper holder, which, you know, held up not bad for quite a while, but finally, finally I had taxed it to its end limits and it said, no way, Jose, Sally. You, this is it. We are now going to throw everything that you so patiently tucked in in your organized fashion onto the floor the minute you walk out of the room. And no, Sunny was not squashed in the craft lunch, thankfully. That was the first thing I ran and checked. But I decided um, I'm, no, I'm no longer going to use that, and I'm just going to cut, cut it up and use the cardboard probably to um, reinforce some shipping packages and things like that. But I learned my lesson. No more cardboard paper holders because I I overstuff them. It's it's me. It's not the paper holder. It's me. If you're not an overstuffer, it'll probably be fine. But this gal, she's an overstuffer. Okay, so um, I thought I, I, I need to do something simple with my hands because I have to talk and make at the same time and that doesn't always go well. <laughs> but I do need to make some more. Yes, you got it. Altered paper clips. And today we're going to be making several different types. One is the shank button type. This is This is so easy. Um, you take your shank button, that little thing there is the shank, and you take your paper clip and you, you, you put it on there. That's right, it's, that's as deep as it's going today. Okay, I just need to crank out a bunch of these. There, you go through a few times, and that way, when you have your paper, you want the two little loops facing down. One loop, two loop, and then your dangler at the north end so that you can go like that. And these are really cool, they look really cute. Um, uh, on a junk journal page because they um, dangle off the side and you have some pretty bling and it's a nice way to honor these pretty old buttons. So if you are a, or a button hoarder like I am, get ready. We are going to be cranking some. Uh, uh, now this is, I think is an old military button. There's some really cool buttons out there. I don't know if this is a real one. I know I bought a whole bunch of real ones. This one definitely looks old. I don't know if it's just military style or it's actually a military button, but it's going on a paper clip and now it is going to find a happy home. So I'm, this is something else I made with buttons that was kind of fun. It's a, I guess it's a, a cameo holder or cabochon holder and I just piled a bunch of fun things in there. I don't even giving you any guys any light here today at all. I'm just like let's all, let's all play in the dark today why don't we? Yeah okay um, yeah so I covered that with triple thick um, you could also use glossy accents. Maybe I did use glossy accents and not triple thick, but it was one of the two. So I put a little glue inside, placed my items, and then covered it with this like clear plastic liquid glue-ish kind of stuff called glossy accents or triple thick. And then it dries up and these things stay permanently affixed there. So that's kind of fun if you have any of these. Um, another way you can play with the buttons. I use some seed beads and things like that in there too. Okay. 
So uh, we could actually dangle that from a, uh, a big paper clip. Probably could do that. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I just, you know, you have options with these things. You, you do. See how nice that dangles? It's a good dangle. That's a, that's a whopper of a dangle, but we may find a use for it. Let's just move forward because we have a lot of buttons. Okay. Oh, here's a cool little button. Sometimes you get these buttons... You see, they're, they're so pretty and they're, they're shanked, so they're sometimes hard to glue flat down onto a page in a junk journal. But when they stick off the side, they, they can be raised and um, have some thickness to them, and it's okay. Yeah, and that's a good thing because then we can use all those pretty buttons and justify why we keep buying more, because we do. It just happens. Isn't that cute? That's just cute. You can lay like that, you can hang off the side, dangle off your page. I don't know. I, I, I love buttons. I just love buttons. Okay let's do another question. What else are you guys thinking? Okay, so by the time you guys are watching this, the storm that's coming is not here yet. Um, I'm recording this on, what's today? Wednesday. Storm is supposed to come tomorrow, and then this video goes live Friday. So I wanted to record the video early in case for some reason I lose electricity or internet and I can't get the video up, so I'm going to try and record Friday's and Saturday's video ahead of time. So it will look like I'm fine, but I might not, I might not be. No, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to be fine. I've weathered many storms. I'm very well prepared, and it doesn't look like it's going to directly hit us here. So all things look good. Many prayers to everybody who is dealing with the storm and wherever it goes. But we carry on, and we, we craft on, right? We craft on. This is a really pretty button. Can, I just, can we just rejoice in the glory of this really pretty button? This is a nice metal button, and I really like it. That's, that's all I have to say. Sometimes that, that's all you need to say. You just enjoy you, your time with your buttons. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see, I'm cranking these out. Let me see so you guys can actually see progress. Sometimes I'll sit down with you guys and I'll make two things, you know, because I talk too much. But, um, okay, let's see, get to another question here. Uh, Betty Ann Flood asks, so Pam, no video today. Are you in the midst of the hurricane again? Okay, so let me rewind just quickly. Um, I made a mistake somewhere this week with the videos. I think I accidentally uploaded Wednesday's video on Tuesday. So I went back in and I scheduled it to go on Wednesday. Now, I think I lost the video. I don't know where it is. I, oh, I meant to check my phone to see if I did or not. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I lost the video. So if there's no video on Wednesday, I'm sorry. I tried. I probably took down a good video and then it disappeared into the vapor of the universe? I don't know. I don't know. But um, we carry on like little soldiers and we just move forward because that's really all we can do because I, I, yeah, there we go. Just move forward, Pam. Just, just move forward. And um, yeah, so sorry about that if I caused confusion, as I'm sure I did. I, I have a grand talent for that. Um, but we carry on. But thank you, Betty Ann, for your concern and your patience. And no hurricane yet here. It's going to hit the other side of Florida first and, and drag itself across the state, hopefully slowing down a lot. And then um, coming over here to um, hopefully miss us, but, you know, hopefully miss everybody. But hopefully it, it'll tire itself out before we, uh, we get too much going. Okay. Now... Well, oh, let's see if we move this up. We're going to another question. Bucky Ann's Creation says, Sonny is too cute. He melts me with that adorable face. How much does he weigh and what kind of dog is he? Um, he is a, an approximately 4.5 pound Maltese, um, sometimes five pounds if he has a good snack, but usually about four and a half pounds. And he's just my little bumpkin. Um, I love sharing him with you guys. Um, okay, DJ asks, DJ B asks, wasn't Sunny supervising to, oh, I, I think I answered that the other day, we carry on. Um, oh, we answered that too. Okay, somebody, Sherry Amoni, oh, I can't, Arnoni Wheat asks, would the stickles spread with a toothpick? Give it a go. I say, why not? I mean, anything can be a tool, right? Oh, but this is a little dangly thing. This is something we made. We were stringing buttons. <gasps> this is so pretty. I should do something with this. Why don't, you, why don't you do something with it, Pam? Right now. Make something. Okay. I'm going to make a, like a spine dangle or something. This, boy, the, thin, the string I put it on is super thin. What were you thinking, Missy? What were you thinking? I don't know. Um, should I put it on a paper clip with a button? Oh, that could be really pretty. Um, is it on there? We could try it. Well, let's try and see what happens. Let's put it on the pretty one. Where's that really super pretty one I had? It's super pretty. Where are you? No, it's gone. How can you be gone? You were just here. I just made you. 
Did I put you back in the main bowl? Yep, it's gone. Oh, no, found it, found it. Here it is, that pretty one. I know, I just really like that one. Okay, um, let's just string it on, see what happens. All right, there we go. So now we have that. We could actually incorporate that into a spine dangle. So this one might be multi-purpose. Okay, we will, uh, we'll just put you over there for, figure you out another day. You dunzy now, you. You're totally a dunzy. All right, um, next question. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a little heart. Let I answer that one. Uh, hey, Pam. Oh, that's the uh, storm question. I think I'm fine, Beverly, but it hasn't hit yet. So here's hoping. <laughs> Thank you for your concern. Uh, Anna Gonzalez asks, I was wondering what is the best to use when gluing cloth to the book? Great, great question. If you're using, if, if you're using chipboard to make your book cover or you're using a book cover, an actual book cover to make, your, your, you're going to embellish it and do things to it. To make your book cover sometimes the question of how to stick cloth to the book cover comes into play now you have a lot of options um, and pretty much most glues will work but what you don't want is bleed through you can use wet white glue but i recommend putting it down like maybe like uh like this and then you take your finger and you smear it all out okay and and i would say try and get around the edges that's important but let the wet white glue get to the tacky stage. Let it be almost dry before you place your uh, material or you might get bleed through. The wet white glue has a lot of moisture or wetness or water in it and that can sometimes come right through your fabric. Um, so muslins are great um, materials to cover books. Uh, bed sheets are great. The cotton kind are wonderful. You can do it with so many things. T-shirt. Um, uh, you can use upholstery fabric. Sometimes it gets a little bulky around the corners, but if you're a good corner folder, you can you can get it to work. And the other way to do, I, there's a lot of different ways to use to make a fabric cover um, without actually having to fold the corners. So you can go around the edge if you have fabric on the inside and outside with a zigzag stitch, and that will hold everything in place. And technically, you don't with a fabric one. You don't technically need to glue it if you have enough tightness in the fabric. If you've folded it well around. The book cover, the tightness of it will keep it in place. But if you're unsure and you do want to add some glue, I've used Fabrifix um, clear silicone glue. Um, this doesn't give you as much bleed through because it's a silicone glue, not a water-based glue. Um, I would do the same thing. I would definitely go and smear it all down. And it's going to give you a, a couple seconds before you actually have to lay anything down. Uh, but And you can also do the same thing with a glue stick. You can run glue stick back and forth. That will give it some tack. Although I've had glue stick kind of let go a little bit over time. Um, the Fabrifix is pretty good. That'll give you a strong hold. If you sew it in place, that's a strong hold. You can even use tapes. There are some double-sided tapes that are strong where you can put pieces of tape, peel the... Uh, um, backing off and then place your fabric although you might have a little bit of a raised feeling uh, you might have um, channels between the tape so unless you completely cover every area or you use super thin um, double-sided tape um, like in one of these things let me show you something like that where it gives you really really super thin tape where you don't get that little channel build up um, that's a thing. You can also use art glitter glue, which is kind of a fancy schmancy white uh, glue that works really well. A lot of artists like to use that. It has a, I think it's much stronger than um, school glue, Elmer's glue, your regular traditional wet white glues, things like that. And um, you can just have a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. And uh, so you can put them on uh, colored paper clips too. I, I put these paper clips in a plastic bag and squirted some alcohol inks in there, mushed it around, and then let, let the paper plastic bag um, air open so it, the alcohol would evaporate, and then they're dry the next day. So um, that's kind of a way you can color them. And let's see what else do we have here in the. Oh, that's a pretty little. I think that's like a sister of that other one. I do like those. And um, okay, so let's see what else we have here. Um, who's got a question? Um, oh, okay, Diana Criswell asks, Hey Pam, a quick question. I made my first full journal and mistakenly did it with just plain white paper. Any suggestions on how to fix the all white? Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with a, an all white paper journal. It's a beautiful writing journal in and of itself. Not, certainly not a mistake. Um, just because 
you may see me or other people use a lot of coffee dyed, avocado dyed, you know, different kinds of colors of paper, things like that. You are, um, you're never obligated to make a journal like somebody else. If you want to just use white paper so that you enjoy just the whiteness of the paper, maybe it's a beautiful writing journal in and of itself. This is kind of a pretty little button, isn't it? Yeah, it's something. I don't know exactly what it is, but we'll see if we can get it on a paper clip. Um... But I would say if you're at that stage where you've made it and then you think to yourself, Ooh, look at a little white and pasty here. I want something to do on it. Um, there's a lot of ways to color up a page. And it looks like some people have very kindly jumped in and answered some questions. Um, JJ recommends inking the edges, stencil, stamp, spritz, and decorate. But you are full of wisdom, JJ. Way to go. And, uh, and um, Diana, okay, Kristen says, I save all our cereal box liners and cut them out flat. Then I have a bunch that I can put in between pages when I work on individual pages already in the journal. Um, that's a great idea, too. So you can freely decorate however you want on any journal page and not worry about the fact that it's, um, I don't know if I can get this at this angle. Let's see, there's little holes in here. Oh, I'm going to go blind doing that. Oh, I think I'm in. I'm in. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, maybe. It's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at that. That's kind of cute, huh? Yeah. All right. We'll see if we'll play with that one someday. Um, what else? Uh, okay, we'll move along. That was a very good question. Um, there's a million and one things, yes, you can do. I'd say, yes, absolutely. Rubber stamping. Um, stenciling is a very fun and easy way to um, do it. You can put, uh, color your pages with gelato. You can do your own artwork. You can rubber stamp and then color in with colored pencils in the interior. Um, you can paper punch the pages. You can tear the pages and then rub ink on them as well. Uh, you can um, do spreads where um, maybe you're going to make a, like a circle design out of something and you put the half of this like put fold the circle in half and then put that into the spine and the circle design lays onto either side page. You can put pockets and tucks that are um, colorful and um, sometimes I will do that. I'll, I'll have a uh, maybe a blank page or a plain page. I'll put a belly band or a pocket or a tuck that's colorful and then if I feel it's and then I'll put whatever I want in there and that takes up more of the room of the page um, and then the actual white page becomes an enhancement and not a detractor because it's amplifying um, and giving your um, pockets and your things that you tuck in them the focal point. And if you feel like you should do more, you don't have to do more, but if you want to do more, you can take out the thing in the pocket and stamp or put a sticker or maybe some postage stamps. Um, there's just so many things you can do. Keep watching. You're, we're, we're gonna, you're going to see ideas. We got ideas for you. Don't, don't worry. You're, that, that's going to be a nice journal when you're done. Um, Brenda Hall asks, how do I sign up for a news, your newsletter? There is a link below my videos on YouTube in the drop-down description box. You just click on that link and then sign up. And then usually the next day you should get your first copy and it will be the current month. And then you'll automatically get the monthly copies on or near the first of each month. And um, if you do that, you get a free digital image emailed to you every month. And a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you can change the word or the font or anything like that. The wording or the font. That's not the right button, Pam. Um, to reflect what, what you would like it to say. I think I need a big one for that. I'm, uh, oh, I'm out of paper clips. Hold on. All right, I'm in serious panic mode. That's it for my longies. And they're not even all longies. Some shorties have intermingled into my longies. What are you? You don't belong here at all. You're some kind of glitzy thing from the jewelry bin. It happens. Cross-pollination yet again. Okay, we do have a few, though. We can carry on. And um, let's ask you, let's ask Pam another question. Okay. Um, okay. Um, hmm. Pam, okay, Janie Anderson asks, Pam, for a future video, would you consider making a junk journal without using tools or items specifically made for paper? No paper punch. No crop a dial. Also, no digitals. I feel challenged. <laughs> sure, I can do that. Uh, Janie, let me write down that down on my idea list. That sounds like a lot of fun. It'll be like the basics. Like, let's say we don't have any fancy stuff at all. We're just going to make a junk journal. And those are fun to make. And they're, they're not hard to make. And you probably have enough stuff around your house. You'd be surprised how many things that you can use that you already have that are not 
technically designated junk journal tools or supplies. But remember, everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. And this is one of those um, challenges that we get to prove that. <laughs> That's right. That fly paper hanging from the seat. No, just kidding. Just kidding. We do. We draw the line with pure like garbage. <laughs> yeah. But um, packaging and things like that are a great resource. Um, junk mail is a great resource. Um, your old books, your old fiction book books, maybe you're done with, and you can you can do some really cool things with uh, text and font from books. And um, so you just use what you have. This I love. I these I just made with um, jump rings. And just plain white little buttons. And I made a little uh, button ring stand. Now today, you are going to be part of a paper clip. That's right. It is your day. That's enough hanging out here in the buttons. And I'm, I'm sure I made you years ago. I remember making you. I loved you when I made you. And then I forgot about you and threw you into the bucket with everybody else. I know. Callous. Callous crafter. Um, what else do we have? We have a question. Okay, that was a very good question. Thank you for that, Janie. Um, Lorraine asks, oh yes, that's our life. Spilled drinks, lost needles, and scraps everywhere. Oh, she's referring to the video I did where I spilled my drink all over everything. Yes. And, and, and have I not said do not put like a water glass? I think I heard Lindsay Weinrich say that once. Don't put a drinking glass on your craft table, especially if you watercolor paint or anything like that where you're dipping in um, a glass jar or something that looks like a glass because you'll end up drinking it before it's over or in my case um, you'll spill it all over your artwork so yes yes it happened <laughs> yes I survived it was fine it was no big deal um, and it's not the first time and I'm sure it won't be the last um, I love Lindsay okay um, she has great classes. If you've never taken like those extra classes and stuff, she has great classes. I highly recommend her classes. I've learned a lot from her. Um, uh, okay, Joyful Dolphin says, uh -huh. do you still have that book or did you sell it? Um, I think the one you're referring to is, got a cereal box and a bed sheet book. Uh, no, but that is going up for sale very soon. Um, so keep your eyes open. It'll probably just pop up in my shop for sale. I am putting um, several things up for sale in November because I feel that's a good month where people are, are looking for items, maybe for Christmas gifts or things like that. And um, so keep your peepers open. There'll be, there'll be, might be some journals and some bundles and things like that. And um, as soon as I can get myself organized, they will be there. Yeah. I've already put up quite a few things um, in November. And uh, thank you to everybody who's purchased them. Um, I truly appreciate that. Sunny and I say a big hello. And we carry on. What else do we have? Um, Rose Apple said, do you make your own coffee dyed paper? I have tried and failed. What size weight of paper do you use? I just love this journal. It's so pretty. Thank you for sharing. And God bless. Um... Oh, and somebody put my How to Coffee Dye Paper video down there. Thank you, Christy Bauer. That was very sweet of you. I appreciate that. And you guys are always welcome to do that, yeah, um, you know, if that helps people find how to do it. But basically, in a nutshell, uh, I, I do it a very, I, I think it's a pretty easy way. It's I use instant coffee crystals because you get a darker color with it. And you can also con control the depth of the color by how much you add. And it's sort of by experimentation. I would say maybe start with um, a tablespoon and some water and then dip a paper in let it sit in there for a little bit and and pull it out and see if you like the depth of the color if not add more crystals um and you can have fun layering crystals in between papers i mean there's a lot of fun things you can do with that i like to use regular printer paper and the weight i use is 20 pound regular printer paper eight and a half by 11. i buy it from amazon in giant boxes um, but pretty much any printer paper that doesn't have too much of a shiny surface will work best because it will absorb the coffee the most um, the easiest and um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun at it. I like to do it in bulk, so I'm probably showing you in the video how to do it in bulk. You can do it painstakingly one page at a time, but I find when you do that, I really like putting these little text things in buttons. I, I, I just do. Um, if, if you find yourself um, you doing the one page method, you might find yourself tearing a lot of pages and that can be frustrating. And I find it's easier to pick up a stack of pages out of the water 
But the trick is, you put, let's say you put a big stack of paper in a, um, like a giant cooking pan of some sort, and you've mixed up your uh, coffee and your water, and you pour it in. What happens is, by capillary action, the um, color will be pulled inside on the edges, on the top and on the bottom paper. But you've got to kind of break the seal between the pages in order to get that coffee in the center of um, the middle of the stack and anywhere that's not the top or the bottom. So it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a technique to lift up, waft the, the water in there, lift up, waft the water in there, lift up, waft the water in there, and um, or just leave the thing there for a long time, walk away and come back tomorrow, and it might have happened on its own, or it might not. Sometimes when there's little residual white patches, I think it looks pretty cool. It looks like a very, very vintage, antique, grungy sort of paper. Um, uh, I like the smell of coffee, so I like that. Uh, but you can also put in, um, with your coffee, you can add a little extract of vanilla if you like that. And um, I know that some people will put um, lavender essential oil or some essential oils, but I don't know, with coffee, coffee and lavender, I don't know, you decide. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, but I like the scent that coffee makes, and some people prefer tea. They don't like the scent of coffee. Um, tea, I find, it, it, there's a million and one kinds of tea, and some are darker colored than others. And some are not truly tea, but they're tea-like, and they may yield more color as well. So it's kind of an experimentation thing, but it's certainly lots of fun. And I think the easiest thing to do is use the instant crystals. That's the ticket. Yeah, that just makes everything nice and fun and dandy. Okay, I think it is time to pull our winner. It is time to see what who is going to win the scrappy contest today. I've been getting some good reviews. People seem to like their scraps. <laughs> so I hope they're having fun out there with them. They're certainly going to have a lot to play with. And um, let me just move this out so I've learned... Learning a lot in life, never never stop learning. Instead of me taking you to the computer, I'm going to bring the computer to you. So, okay. All right, let me just switch over here to the YouTube random comment picker. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get it here. Oh, that's better, yeah. All right, so we have um, 549 comments. And now you watch right there, because that's where I'm going to touch right back. Actually, I think I can touch it. Let's go. Go! All right, there's the names. Is it you? Is it Mary L. Oliveira or Mary I. Oliveira? Congratulations! You have won the Scrappy Contest for this week. So your uh, all you need to do is contact me by next Thursday, um, the day before the next Scrappy Contest, and let me know you're the winner and give me an address to mail it to, and I will be more than happy to mail you. A pile of scraps. That's right. And um, then it, then it's completely up to you and your imagination what you will do with them after that. All right. So let's see. Sunshine, front line and center. You got anything? I, I think so. I think I think I have something. Here I come. Here I'm, I'm. I'm feeling very small. Oh, my face is dirty, Mom. I got into your Jello cup again. Oh no. Have you got orange face? Yeah. He's not gonna. Okay, just. I'll, I'll see if I can work the crowd. Maybe they won't notice. Hello, everybody. It's sunshine. Yes, I am here. I'm, I'm having, um, 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 you had it all prepared. What's going on? I'm a little stage, I'm, I'm a little, I, what's that called? Stage fright? Yeah, I guess I'm a little, I'm a little stage fright today. That's okay, though. Um, all right, so, Mom had a pile of, um, you know that material trimmy stuff that she puts on her junk journals? Well, she has it in a bag, and I got the end of one. And I took it. I took it across the living room and all over the bedroom, and it was everywhere. And it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. I think everybody should do that at least once a day. Yeah, yeah, I think you do that about once a day, don't you? My mom, you couldn't move the bag, and then I wouldn't be able to reach it. And I've done that, haven't I? Yeah. And then you bring it back down, and then I reach it. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I, I absorb my responsibility in that. That is true. But we can safely say you are not squashed in the craft avalanche, right? I was not squashed in the craft avalanche. But it could happen. Don't let it happen to you. No. No, don't, don't, don't let it happen. Um, good. Okay. So, and... Um, are we going to be okay during the storm? Yeah, we're going to be just fine. Don't you worry. We have, we have enough snacks. That's 
That's all you really need? All that other stuff they tell you to get? Batteries, water, you know, planks. Yeah, not important. Sunny, I think those things are important. Not really, Mom. You know it's you and me on the couch with the snacks, right? Okay, I don't care if we have internet. I don't care if we heck and watch TV. Sunny, it's really important we have internet so we can talk to, with everybody. Oh, no. That means no pop dates if, if we don't have internet. No pop dates. No pop dates. Hmm. All right, I, I will reconsider. Snacks and internet are the only things that you need in a storm. Okay, well, all right. I, I, I will leave, we'll leave that to the professional. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Where are you going? Snack bowl. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, very good. All right, well, uh, we'll put you back to sleep now, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, all right, bye, everybody. You have an awesome crafty day. See you next time. All right, there you go. There goes the little snuffers. Um, what can I say? He has a mind of his own. Um, he's growing up so fast. Uh, we have, um, uh, we, we, Sunny and I have a newsletter. It's a uh, monthly free emailed newsletter. And if you don't know, maybe you're new or um, you're just wondering where to find it. It's all my links are in the description box down below the video. And with your free monthly emailed newsletter, if you sign up for that, you get a free digital image. I think I said this already, a checklist of supplies to keep your eyes open for, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you can print that out and tuck it in the front of your junk journal. Um, and, um, and a page list of ideas. So, um, uh, so keep those to keep those fires burning on how you can fill those pages in your junk journal. And also, I have my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcast, new audio material, comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on the other days of the week, uh, there are video podcasts that you can watch on Spotify. I have an Etsy shop where I have journals and bundles and things like that. When I have them ready and assembled, I will put them in there. Sometimes I do big fanfare video, social media splash. Sometimes I just sneak them in there for whoever comes by. So take a peek every once in a while, especially during this holiday season. And um, I sell digikits, which are um, uh, printable digital images. Uh, they're themed. There's five pages each. And then you can print them out on your home computer and use them any way you like. There's birds and butterflies and dragonflies and uh, Victorian pictures and um, mystical maidens and celestial and receipts and postcards and all sorts of different things. I think there's over 180 of them right now. And also I sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting paper. Uh, there's over 100 plus pieces. You're going to find antique ledger and checks and postcards and receipts and uh, music papers, dictionary pages, a science section, a um, um, nature section, um, all sorts of fun things. I can never remember all the different sections. But um, uh, yes, there's over 100 plus pieces in there. A lot of fun to um, add to your junk journals here and there. You can tear the pages up, things like that. It's a lot of fun. And also, if you're not a big fan of printing, but you like the idea of having DigiKits, I have a print and mail service. So I will print them out for you. I do them in 10 DigiKits at a time. So for one flat fee, which includes free priority mail shipping, you get 10 DigiKits printed. They have five pages each, so you get 50 pages printed on lightweight cardstock, which makes them um, pretty much instantly ready to be used as pockets or tucks or journal cards or things like that. Um, or you could embellish them any way you like on covers and things like that. A lot of fun. And uh, what else? What else? Oh, I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. Um, oh, I, did, I did make a bunch of these. I'm very, very proud. Look how much, how we got, we did a lot together today. Um, uh, yes, if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, I have a section in there. I am an affiliate on Amazon. So if you go to my Amazon shop, um, the Paper Elpis Amazon shop. Um, you do not pay more for the items because you use my links, but it does help my shop. I uh, get a little bit of commission for that, so that keeps the keeps the lights on. So thank you very much for that. And um, I have a merchandise shop, which during this November, during November 2022, there's a 25% off sale going on. It's my t-shirt shop, basically. So if you're looking uh, for... Um, uh, if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply and to prove and otherwise you can get that for yourself a friend a family member or a loved one or a, a, a fellow crafter that'd be neat to make a little uh, 
um, Christmas tree item, huh? Um, yes, and um, you can get that on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, zip hoodie, mug, tote, or water bottle. And probably more um, products coming soon. Um, when they come out, I will let you know. And um, you can find me on social media, on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun doing weekly and monthly challenges over there, as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos, which is so inspirational. And you're also well in, welcome to just join and lurk. Nothing wrong with a good lurk. Lurking just means you're hanging out. You're not posting anything. You're just being inspired by what others uh, are posting and then maybe you get an idea and you run off and you try it and you're all excited and that is a-ok -okay too because we're all here to learn and um, remember that um, fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon and i'll see you next time guys um, be safe be well happy crafting take care bye bye